afternoon and welcome to this week's Cyber Conversation brought to you by Periton. My name is Audrey Murphy and on behalf of Periton, we are proud to partner with Cyber to bring you these weekly conversations. For those of you who are joining us for the first time today, Cyber is a program out of Dakota State University in Madison, South Dakota that works to motivate, empower, and educate young women in cybersecurity. Just a reminder, if at any point during the program you have a question, you can ask it via the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. I am very honored to introduce today's speaker, Nicole Frisbee. Nicole is a cyber program manager with Periton, where she leads a team focused on cyber threat, malware analysis and reverse engineering, and incident response. She got her start writing technical documentation and running training for systems, and now has only over 15 years of experience leading technical teams, including software developers, supporting both the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security. Nicole loves solving problems and thrives on the opportunity to overcome obstacles, resolve issues, and move initiatives forward. Nicole, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? So um, I got my start uh, in college working in the computer and information sciences. Uh, I actually started college as a, a poli sci major and uh, had a professor who kept asking me, well, what are you going to do with that degree? And I never had a good answer. Uh, so he kept saying, well, you know, computers are the weight of, of the future. You should definitely get a computer science degree. Uh, so I... Uh, did the computer and information sciences and then moved on, found, found a job with TASC at the time, later north of Grumman, and started my career down the, the cyber path and down the software development path as well. Um, with that said, uh, so started working with the DOD environment. Uh, I know I went in there, I wrote user manuals. So a lot of systems, writing user manuals for, for different systems. Um, and I was lucky enough that after two months of writing these user, man, user manuals, uh, they actually allowed me to go out and train these systems to all the different users uh, on the military installations, uh, which I loved because, um, hey, I, I know all this stuff about this system now, I wanna actually use that knowledge. Uh, from there, uh, they allowed me to then to take over a system and uh, provide all the information of what was needed from him, how to support those users. Um, and that was really my first introduction to cyber because you were dealing with um, incident response systems. So all these incidents were coming in uh, from the, the different systems across the military installations all into these systems. And I was getting introduced to that information because I needed to know how then operators would use it uh, within the system and escalate those things to the other operators. From going to supporting the DOD in that area, I then supported the Army. Uh, again, uh, supporting software development, a lot of SharePoint. So SharePoint became well known and um, one of the first versions of it, we were trying to, to optimize it for incident handling again. Um, and then we used it for all kinds of different things, but that was really my first introduction to, to management. Um, I hadn't been a manager before, um, and they were like, hey, the manager's fleeting up to, to be the department manager. Would you like to be the project manager? Well, yeah, you're going to say yes to that. So uh, that, was, that was my first introduction to management, and I really enjoyed it. I now realize that if I'm not getting the butterflies in my stomach going into a job, then it's not challenging me. So uh, I make sure that any jo new job I take on, I'm, I'm feeling that anxiousness or nervousness about the opportunity, because that means that I'm going into something where I'm going to learn new stuff. And that is one of the things that working with new employees, new college in interns or people new from college coming into the workplace uh, that I've also discovered. Um, a lot of the times we don't challenge uh, new employees enough. Uh, I think one of the key examples I noticed about this was when we uh, had an intern working for us and he was doing a great job. 
fabulous job. But he came into the office one day and he was flying a helicopter around the cubes. And you're thinking, really, you can do that? Well, the answer is no, you can't do that. <laughs> but instead of saying, you know, he got a little bit of a slap on the wrist of, hey, can't do that. Just take the helicopter home. But it also told us that, hey, he was bored. Um, we weren't challenging him enough. We needed to give him something meaningful to do. Uh, so that's probably the, the biggest lesson I saw in, in managing people is the different levels of cyber knowledge or information knowledge or different careers that are coming across. And you want to be challenged and learn new things. And as a manager, I have to set people up to, for those opportunities. Um, then uh, working with DHS, uh, why that was so interesting, and especially the cyber. I had gone from creating systems to manage incident responses to then needing to manage systems that actually did the incident responses themselves. So I took on this, this task order or you know, this, this work that I didn't know the majority of the terms that were in the, the requirements or the documents that were in front of me. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what this stuff is. So uh, Google became my friend very quick. Uh, looking up all the different terms and making sure that I understood what all the different pieces meant. Uh, because you're going to, to come across things that you don't know what they mean and you got to figure out really quick. Uh, so I was lucky in the fact that I, that I was put in that position, but also, you know, we were able to knock it out of the park and, and get the, the job done for that customer. Um, with my current job, I've been working supporting DHS for six years. Uh, in that time, I've had six different jobs. So definitely not a, uh, definitely multiple opportunities to learn new things. Um, and one of the things that the managers have always told me, or my managers have always told me is, they put me in all those different opportunities because they wanted me to learn new things, new things that I needed to learn in order to go to the next level. So both in the cyber field, and in the management field. Uh, whether it be, hey, I don't know that much about reverse engineering. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you over here with the re reverse engineers and teach you about the malware team and what the malware team does and then what the reverse engineers do on top of that. And then I'm gonna turn around and put you over here in the software development team. Oh, well, I know about that, so I don't need that experience. That was an eye-opening experience for me because all the tools, there's all these tools out there um, I come from a software background, and so I understood the software, but actually seeing the data come through the system and how you deal with that data, all new ground for me. So some of the big things I took probably from, you know, and I'm, ex I'm shortening a very <laughs> long period of time here, but uh, some of the key things I took out of this were butterflies are good, <laughs> that um, Mentors, mentors are always people that you need to, to look up to and see, oh, hey, they have a cool job. I want that job. Let me go talk to them about how I get that job <laughs> and what things I need to do in the meantime uh, in order to, to groom myself for it. Because um, a lot of times, you know, you see somebody doing something really cool with, with computers and like a reverse engineer who has all this experience of, hey, there's not only malware out there, but I can stop that malware. And then you have, okay, well, that's cool, but how did you get there? Um, and having those conversations with them of, well, first I had to learn, you know, what malware was to begin with. And then I had to learn what are, what is the different uh, processes and uh, go through the GREM certifications and different pieces to even learn how to, to deal with malware before you know, we even get into the scripting part of the and how, how to reverse the actual malware and what it's doing. So continuous learning, making sure you're always, always challenging yourself and finding that person that you wanna be in your future. Thanks, Audrey. Thank you, Nicole. So 
you talked about incident response, right? So is it always like when you have an incident, is it like on your toes kind of thing? Or how do you, how do you normally go about when you have like a huge incident, say, for example, there's been a big ransomware attack. And so what, how do you do it? Is it like they show in the movies, like all action oriented, like jump right in, you know, yelling orders at everybody? Like, how do you, how does it work? Well, I'll say um, where I work, it's very different than if you're sitting in say a stock or a security operations center. Uh, they already have the tools on the network. And so if they have an incident coming in, they're immediately jumping on, uh, watching that data, watching how it's going through the system so that they can then turn around and see what they're really trying to get to. But whereas uh, the teams I've worked on, uh, we are going into an environment where we do not have tools. So our first, it's a longer process. It's, it's not that quick turnaround process because we have to A, provide them the tools and uh, all the different data for that environment to make sure we understand their architecture and aren't going to go in there and break anything. Um, and that can sometimes be a, a much longer process. I think you're on mute. Sorry. I always try to mute when I'm not talking so that anything doesn't get distracted. Sorry. Um, what has been your favorite thing to work on? Like your absolute favorite? It was that first uh, work that I did with DHS. So we were doing incident response kits. So I got to learn about a lot of different tools <laughs> that exist in the environment because I had to look at all the different tools that exist to see, okay, what was the best fit for what they were trying to do? And then I had never worked in on um, like rack, in racks with all this gear and you have to plug in. So these were huge, huge boxes of equipment that were already plugged in together that we had to put together and then um, deal with moving them back and forth. And you're talking, 150 pounds worth of equipment that you're trying to then move to a different site and um, to hook up to somebody's network to provide all the incident response. That was definitely the fun one. Uh, just, just all the systems engineering that went into that and, and looking at all the different tools. So then would you say that's also the coolest thing that you've ever done? For sure, for sure. <laughs> I mean, when you're blowing um, the electric out in the building because you have <laughs> too much power coming out of the equipment, uh, it, it lends itself to a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so we have a question from one of our audience. Is it really hard to switch from working on one topic to another? What did you use besides Google when you didn't know something? I mainly stuck with Google, but I know, for instance, um, one of the things I ask software developers when I'm interviewing software developers is how you learn new, new code um, stack. Um, because a lot of times you get into a job and you are gonna be working in one framework and then the framework changes. And so you have to change with it. <laughs> so. Google becomes a big part of it, but there are forums that exist for whatever um, you're working in. So I forget which the one, what the ones were for software, but there were specific forums that people would bring up that they were working in. So um, a lot of times I was in a C-sharp environment. So a lot of times they were talking about the different uh, Microsoft um, sites that were available where they could teach themselves C-sharp. Um, and it's similar for, you know, you're moving, especially incident response, you're moving from, um, you have a whole host of tools that can be used within this environment. So you go in and you have the basic understanding of, I'm an analyst, I'm going to receive data, this is what I'm going to do with the data. But you have to teach yourself how to use the new tool that you've never dealt with. So I know a lot of people use, uh, I don't, um, 
YouTube videos. YouTube videos become everybody's friend. So <laughs> yes, we even use them for work. So uh, we love YouTube videos and they teach us a lot, especially about all these tools uh, that we have to use in the environments. Very nice. So then do you have to write like a lot of reports for your work or you, do you get to do more techie stuff? I am less techie now, especially as a department manager, I'm more managing the people that get to do all the fun techie stuff. Um, six years ago, I was writing a lot of reports <laughs> um, and there was a lot of documentation involved in what I was doing. Um, depending on the field that, uh, that you're working in, it's, especially if you're doing a, a analytical work, there's gonna be a report that has to be generated. Hey, what are your findings? Um, if you are doing software development, you're writing, but it's code. Um, so the, but you're still having to write about um, what that code does and, ex and explain all of that. So there is a lot of writing no matter what you do. So then how does, or what does your day-to-day -day look like? So my day-to-day -day right now deals with um, lots of meetings. <laughs> I like to get on the customer site and talk to customers, um, see what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what we need to improve on. Um, talking to fellow managers about, okay, is there anything you need? How can I help you? Talking to employees, are you looking for additional training? Is there anything I can help you with your career? Making sure that they are challenged and have opportunities. Um, I have a lot of conversations about, hey, I'm doing this now, but I'm interested in this. Um, we do a lot of movement on our programs from, hey, I'm doing network an uh, analytics today, but I'm really interested in that threat intel. Um, what do I need to do in order to get into that? And having conversations about, well, you, you need to go look at the different APT uh, activity, do some research on that, and then let's talk again so that we can keep uh, challenging all of our employees and moving them to, to where they want to go in their careers. That's Very my cool. today. I like that, helping people move from one area to another uh, based on their interests. I like that very much. Mm -hmm. And it helps a lot when you're, the employees, they like what they're doing. Yes, absolutely. So. If, a, if an employee feels like you're taking care of them also, um, and that they have an opportunity for that additional growth, they're gonna stay and, and, and do good work for you a lot longer. Exactly. And I like to, I don't know if it's necessarily true or if my perception is maybe a little bit off, but. I like to think of the employee-employee relation as a relationship in itself. It's not just something that you go do and you leave. No, you have to nurture that relationship. If you want good work from your employee, you nurture that relationship. You mentor them. You help them. And it's like a mutual beneficial relationship. There's a word Correct. for that um, The with the... Symbiotic. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. Um, it should never be a chore. It's definitely a mutual relationship where, um, yeah, I, we need to make sure that they're taken care of and it, it helps everyone. Exactly. So you have a background in computer science. So do you have a programming, like a favorite programming language? I really have only worked in C-sharp, um, a little bit in Java from schooling, um, because that's what I had to do in school. Um, and I'll, I'll even date myself. C++ was not my fun, my favorite either. But um, yes, uh, C-sharp is the one that I probably dealt with the, the most. So, and then since then, I really haven't had to deal with it. So... With your job, um, do you get to travel a lot or pre-COVID, do you get to travel a lot? So 
I was fortunate that I was able to attend some conferences um, in the United, so in Las Vegas and in San Francisco um, for cyber. So I went to DEF CON and uh, went to RSA. So those were the two I got to travel for recently. Um, before that, um, depending on the job. So I had one job, uh, I got to go to Canada because we were training a system to Canada. So that was kind of cool. Um, I have fellow coworkers who have traveled to Japan and Brazil and the UK for work they were doing. Um, but by and large, I, I do not travel much. Not for, not for work specific stuff because a lot of the times we're supporting the federal government and you know, it's, it's local work. Okay. Um, I was at RSA last year, loved the conference. So yes. huge, so many people. Oh my goodness. All the swag. <laughs> oh my God. We came home with a lot of swag. <laughs> yes. Um, so are you part of any groups or communities that are targeted toward women in STEM or women in cyber? I am not. Um, that is actually one of the areas that I've always identified as an improvement point for myself um, because a lot of companies, for instance, offer employee resource groups or just resource groups in general. Um, and then there's the ones that um, are outside of companies that you can join. So I've always identified them and said, oh, I'm going to go attend that. But time always just gets away from me. Um, and But it's definitely something I want to get more involved in. Okay, very cool. Um, there's this uh, conference that we've been fortunate to be a part of called Visis. It's Women in Cybersecurity. Oh, perfect. Um, I think it's the largest conference that's like directed toward just women in cyber. Not to say that only women are allowed. Mm -hmm. Everybody is allowed, but um, it's targeted more toward women in cyber. And also they have like a large percentage of students that attend the conference. So they get to meet these professional women that are working in the industry. They get to learn from them and they get to meet and network. And it's a, it's a fantastic conference. Yeah. They're, they're all great, I, I, absolutely. Definitely, they, people should join them. Yeah. yeah. I should join them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing that we uh, have been fortunate to go to, I think the last at least three years now. Um, so yeah, fun stuff, a lot of swag again. So, <laughs> um, so we have another question from our audience. Do you think you'll do more tech stuff in the future or <laughs> keep having more meetings. <laughs> I'm going to keep having more meetings. Um, so I deal a lot with, when I say have meetings, it's usually about the, the activities that are going on in the, the environment. So it's not, um, you have to have, <laughs> COVID has lent itself to meetings. Usually I didn't have as many meetings as I had, but unfortunately that is the way we, we connect with people now. Um, with pre-COVID, I would go into the building, um, something would be happening, uh, an incident would be occurring, um, and you would still be having those conversations, but it was a much more free-flowing environment versus I attend meetings. <laughs> um. What, what's a risk that you've taken in your career that paid off? So again, uh, when I moved, I was very, I, I'd been supporting software development, software development teams and software development uh, projects for 12 years. So the move out of that and into really the support to DHS was definitely that, that risk. That's why the butterflies, that's why, um, because it was moving into the cyber domain, you know, doing, I was doing endpoint security. I was doing the incident response kits. I was looking at malware and uh, the families of malware. Um, None of that I was familiar with up to that point. So I would definitely say that was the biggest risk I took. Uh, 
sorry, I, my internet froze. Like I'm, I wasn't even sure I was on. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, and last couple of questions that we have for you. Uh, what would you like your lasting impact to be? That is a good question. I, I want to be recognized by the people who work for me as being somebody that helped them. Like when they're thinking back on their careers, I was somebody that helped them along, that get, had a good impact on them. Because I know looking back at my own career, I have those people that I think about. And hey, even if it was somebody who like in a, a, a presentation like this or a conversation like this, you know, said something lasting of, oh, this is what I did and had some type, type of impact on me, that's, that's what I want. I want somebody to think back and be like, hey, that was a turning point in my career or she really helped me uh, move forward. I like that. Um, our last question to you is, what advice would you give to all the young people that are watching the session right now? I would say just because you're doing something now doesn't necessarily mean that's going to continue to be what you do for your entire career. That um, careers change. Uh, you do a lot of different things. You get exposed to different things um, and also take on different challenges that might be uh, something you like more than what you're doing today. So make sure that you're embracing those and taking risks and continuing to learn. I think learning is the, the biggest key because um, it will help you further down the road. Thank you. I'll just jump in here. I think Conti's uh, computer froze. So I just wanted to close it out. Thank you so much, Nicole, for being here. And all the attendees and everyone watching, please check Cyber out on social media. And we will have another conversation with you in two weeks. Everybody have a great night. Thank you.